Neil from Essex here out on a beautiful, beautiful weekend afternoon. It's about 70 degrees outside today. I've got my tractor driving Crocs on. We're gonna go out today and do a little bit of lane sharking. We're gonna take the lane shark and run back and forth here and maintain some of the trails that I keep here in my backyard that my kids kind of ride four wheeler back and forth on. So today we're gonna take a couple of minutes, jump into this lane shark, the hammerhead lane shark. We're gonna talk about some of the operational techniques of this machine and both the hammerhead and the traditional version. If you've got one of these things you're considering picking one up from us, I think you'll learn a lot. Essex, a helping hand with your land. So before we get going, a couple things if you're not familiar with what a lane shark is. Uh, there's a lot of different mowing attachments for tractors, right? Everybody usually has something for taking care of grass and brush and those kinds of things. Uh, traditionally, as years have gone by, it had been rotary cutters, right? a big old rotary cutter in the back of your tractor with one big spinning blade underneath of it. They do a good job, they're rugged, they can you know, knock off things that can be two and three inches around, uh, but it's not the most refined implement. Uh, they take generally a, quite a bit of horsepower to run and they bang around a lot in operation. And because they're back behind your tractor, they don't give you any ability to say like trim the sides of a road or your lanes or your trails. It is simply what you're dragging it over top of straight down the middle. As years have gone by, we've seen a lot of our customers migrate to flail mowers where we used to sell rotary cutters before. Flails are gonna be more expensive. They are more mechanically complex, but that spinning drum underneath a flail mower can be equipped with grass knives for doing grassy things, uh, wood hammers for, for knocking wood and brush and stuff apart. But many flail mowers are capable of doing some sort of offset that takes care of that inability to kind of like reach out beyond the side of the tractor. Now, simple mowers like the Dumberinos that we sell a lot of, they can offset mechanically just a couple of inches to help give you a little bit of reach, or you can get hydraulic versions that will reach further beyond the tractor. But there's still some limitations here in where you're able to place those things. And this is where the lane shark comes in. Uh, putting a mower out on your loader does come with some complications, mainly getting power out to it. But once you have the unit set up and your tractor kind of equipped in order to operate this mower, you can stick that lane shark out on your loader and reach it into wherever you need to have a mower. And I use that reaching over the sides of pond banks and streams if I'm going straight over. You can offset it to try to mow along the sides of it. In the case of what we're gonna do here today, you can kind of swing it up and stand it vertical to trim back trails and stuff. It's a very versatile mower in the ways that you're able to position it that kind of creates an attachment that is hard to achieve with anything else. Um, when we look into the other things that are available out there on the market, you kind of really got into almost commercial and industrial mowing to be able to cover a lot of the applications that the Lane Shark is able to do. They now have taken this one step further with this hammerhead mower that I'm gonna run out here today. The hammerhead mower allows you to offset and tilt this lane shark mower uh, from the seat of your tractor up here using hydraulics. Uh, so they've added a real convenience factor and some additional utility to this mower with a number of upgrades here recently. So that was a lot of words, but if you've never seen a lane shark before, you've gotta know what this thing is doing. So we're gonna turn the key here, start it up and go and start running some of these trails. Uh, that I keep here in the backyard. <laughs> so my GoPro fell off the tractor and I drove over the mount. The, uh, this is what you're gonna get. I don't do a lot of arm's length videos, but today we're gonna get one. Okay, so when you're operating the Lane Shark, again, I said you can put it into all kinds of different positions, right? So this vertical one right here is the one that I'm finding particularly useful for coming out here and maintaining trails. As I'm going back and forth here, so what are your options here, right? Up loppers, basically, right? So if you want a mechanical tractor mount a way to take care of miles of, of trails of vertical growth on it, this is the way to take care of it, right? So down here, we install a control box onto the tractor. Uh, this one has system on off, turn my motor on and off for my cutting, in and out, and this is the, the, where the hammerhead stuff comes in, so in and out for the movement of the cutter and up and down for the way I tilt my deck. So, so I'm gonna reach down here, turn the system on, and then you can see here when I tilt the deck, I can go up and down, and then I can swing it in and out. This is particularly useful because this is a really tight trail. Um, I'm usually doing this with my kids 
kids version of like a, a small four wheeler. And so having this, or being able to swing it in and be vertical helps keep this thing narrow as we're driving down this tight trail. Now if I reach up here and turn on the motor, you can hear it start up. It's gonna start those blades spinning. Now you gotta watch on this thing because this blade spinning with the mower off like this is obviously dangerous, right? This thing's covered with warning labels. As it, as it gets into the woody material here, you can see here it just trims up these branches and stuff right off the side as I'm going. I give it more revs, it's gonna spin a little faster. Now not only are we mowing vertically here, but we also have kind of greater height control than you might be used to, right? So if I want to come up and clean up these things here that are probably six foot off the ground, right, I can lift my loader up in order to reach up here where the brush is located. Some, you can have a little concern with this thing about uh, the amount of horsepower you're able to deliver to the mower, right? The, the gallons per minute. Uh, the, the motors on these are eight to 12 GPM. So it's not a huge amount of horsepower that your tractor is delivering out to this mower, especially compared to a flail or a rotary cutter, where you get a lot more horsepower down into it. When you're using a mower like this, this isn't really made to give like the finest finish, right? You've got a big heavy blade spinning around. That big heavy blade is gonna lop off anything that it hits. It's not gonna grind it up so much and give you a finish like a flail would. Um, so I haven't actually had any horsepower concerns running this before. In fact, most of the time I run my tractor at pretty low RPMs anyway, just cause it's quieter. Um, so I wouldn't be afraid to put it on a machine that even runs down into the lower end of that uh, gallon per minute range that Lane Shark recommends. All right, so this is cool. So when we're done with the vertical cutting here and we want to go straight ahead, we just take this guy and we can flatten it out. And slowly tip it back down into position and then be able to drive forward into the area that we want to mow, right? Normally if you're going to do woods clearing and that kind of stuff with a mower, you've got to drive over top of it with a tractor first or back over top of it. Backing over top of it is one thing that flails don't do great at. Uh, when you're using a flail, you really have to be driving forward. But with this, it doesn't matter so much. But anyway, so I can move that into the front position here on my loader. I've got a pile of briars here in front of me that I can just drive into. So as far as operating technique goes, one thing here that you want to keep in mind is, is the impact that these forces have on your loader. The thing that I typically like to do is drive into the brush with my loader pointed up in the air, have it cut the brush, and then tip the loader down and then back up and back drag the loader out of the brush to cut close to the ground. That way as I'm backing up, I'm not digging that mower deck into the ground and potentially pushing weird forces and stuff back into my tractor and loader. So, in with it tilted up just a little bit. And once you're in and you've done that, tip the nose down a little bit. Back out. And then that's what's actually gonna grind up the briars as you go. And you can see there, that does a pretty solid job. So another thing that we could do here with this mower that you can't typically pull off with a traditional mower is coming down on top of the, uh, the branch we're gonna cut. Now you gotta watch because this, this, again, this is a mower that can throw debris. So we come over top of the mower and you'd see this kind of thing done a lot of times with forestry mulchers. But we can take our stick here, let it stand, and then just drop the mower right down over top of it and chop it as we go. And get some nice small chips as opposed to having to grind it up on the ground. Another trick that I've learned here on the hammerhead mower is how to return it to the home position. So when you bring it back in, it needs to come back in level. And sometimes it's hard to gauge exactly where level is uh, when the mower is down close to the ground. If you shut it off, raise it up in the air so that you can look down here underneath of it, you can easily see here at this point exactly where level is. So here I can tip the mower left to right 
And when I bring it back into its home position, I can see a lot easier how it's returning and make sure it comes back in level. If you're off a little bit, you won't mess anything up, uh, but it's sometimes a little frustrating. You sit there and rock the button back and forth trying to get it to retract back in the whole way. Or if you lift your loader up and you look at the bottom side of it, it's just a lot easier to gauge than trying to look over top of your hood. Now, if you have a lane shark already, there's some changes here on the Seaflow kit on these buttons that would be a little bit different than the mower that you have today. Uh, the more recent lane sharks have come with this silver box on here that you use in order to enable constant flow on your third function. This one works differently though. When you turn the system on, you start flowing oil right away. And so that's so, so that these in and out and up and down buttons can work. And then this button in here is gonna turn your motor on and start your blade spinning. So oil is flowing as soon as you turn the system on, but it, the blades don't spin until you press the motor button. Another neat thing here is that this is tied to the seat switch. So if I stand up and go back down, you're gonna notice that my system turned off, right? The oil stopped flowing. That's a great safety feature on these things. If you jump off the machine while this would have been turned on now, it'll cut the mower off so it's not split, spinning while you're walking around. So a couple things to look here as far as the mower itself is concerned. Uh, being able to tip it up like this is really nice. Um, I tied up some twine and stuff in here earlier and it made it a lot easier to be able to clean out the underside of the mower with it vertical rather than having to you know, climb down underneath of it. Um, I did beat up the rubber building back here a little bit, probably by throwing some stuff out the back. Um, the shoes here on the bottom are made to be drug across the ground. You see it gets a little bigger up here in the front as you're driving forward. Like I said, I tend to try to run this thing dragging it backwards across the ground rather than pushing it forward while it's on the ground. Um, you, anytime you have an implement that can be used that way, pulled by the tractor or the implement rather than being pushed by the tractor, uh, you end up with a lot less wear and tear on your implement. Uh, the blades down here in the bottom can be replaced. Um, I've nailed a number of uh, large rocks with it and chipped it up here a little bit already. They are also double-sided. Uh, you can flip them over and have them cut off of that other surface. Uh, if we come over here, you'll notice the hydraulic motor up here on the top. This is the low flow version. They do make a medium flow if you have a little bit more hydraulic capacity. They do create heat. Um, when I touch the hoses down here in these fittings, they're already warm. And I have not run this tractor hard or long at this point. Uh, if you're doing a heavy, heavy use of one of these things, if you're gonna be getting into some like light commercial type work as this hammerhead mower kind of lends itself to, I'd consider running a hydraulic power pack on the back of your tractor. So in summary, cool implement, right? Just uh, not the easiest thing to use, not the most cost effective for the dollar, but extremely unique and made for an extremely specific application that just nothing else seems to address quite like this mower does. They are very, very cool. Uh, not for everyone, but you know, when you've got the right task in hand and you got to have the implement for the job, uh, we find many times that has been the lane shark. So it uh, has a little bit of a learning curve to it, like some of the stuff that we talked about today of how you approach things when mowing and back dragging when you're against the ground. I think there's a lot of uh, operational techniques that you can pick up on after running, running one of these things for a little while. So shopping for a piece of equipment that we can help, or if you have parts and service needs for a machine you've already got, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com. Plumbing this thing is always more complicated than most implements because of its need for constant flow. Lane Shark does a mind, mind believable, 